the wisdom that peruses every activity of God the wisdom that gives God his feedback the wisdom that delights the heart of the father it is this wisdom I'm presenting we understand how the words are chosen why because we are doers of the word we are masters of the word we are poets of the word I pray to God that your ministry will not be in the outer court but you will come into the place of the very presence of God but by reason of Christ who has opened the way we have free access to God and we are not afraid therefore he said come boldly before the throne of grace that you might find grace and help even in a time of need and most of us who think that prayer is a means of just taking something taking something we have never got to the place when we understand that prayer is work when we pray we work when we pray we when we pray we form when we create we make things happen and you know what in the secrecy of this work god rewards you okay now get set for the good word of god with pastor Obed. of it always a blessing hear this the word of God says this is heaven and this is earth there were waters that had covered the earth and God divided some of the waters and took it up and now the waters that were beneath, God now put space in between the waters. And this space is all we see from earth to outer space. There is inner space and outer space. Inner space is what you see. Outer space is what we cannot see. So all of the inner and the outer space is one, a space. Now, within this space, God now puts lights, the dwelling places of the sun, moon, and stars. The dwelling places of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Don't forget that above space, there are waters. Then there were also waters under space. But the waters that were under space, the earth was covered with this water. And God now said, let all the water that is upon the earth be gathered into one place. And the gathering together of the water so that the dry land can appear, God called it seas. So this water below, its gathering together was called seas. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the water is called he seas. And God saw that it was good. So when we say seas, we're looking at the gathering together of the waters. The gathering together of the waters. The gathering together of the waters. Called he seas. Beautiful. I go further. Now, this then suggests that If this is space, the waters above the waters beneath or below, which is referred to as seas, this Bible that we read brings us to Psalm 148, the verse number four. And he makes a very profound statement. He said, praise him, ye heavens of heavens. Everybody say, heavens of heavens. heavens of heaven. Can you come alive? Because what we are doing is going to be very wonderful soon. Say it again, heavens of heavens. Heavens of heavens. Say it for the last time, heavens of heavens. heavens, of heavens. Okay, praise him, you heavens of heavens. 
and you want this that be above the heavens. Oh. What is above? What is above? Praise him. You heavens of heavens. And you waters that be above the heavens. Ah. But I thought that the waters were above the space. But then when you turn back to Genesis, the chapter number one, the Bible said the firmament he also called heaven. And God called the firmament heaven. So watch this. If you're watching from the beginning, watch this. We realize that this was earth and this was heaven and water was upon the earth. So we have heaven here and then we have water here and we have earth. So in the beginning, God created the heavens the heavens and then the earth. Then the Bible says that water had covered the face of the, of the, darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Holy Ghost was moving upon the face of the waters. Then now the Bible says God divided the waters. Somebody says, so how do we know that the earth was in the waters? The Bible says that for the earth, standing in water and out of water. So the earth was already in the water and then it stood out of the water. So now from here, we have the waters, we have heaven, and then we have the earth. Then now, when we come further, we realize that this waters here, he now says, praise him, you waters above. Then he said, praise him, heavens of heavens. And you waters that be above the heavens. Oh, so the waters above, where are they? They are above the space, the firmament. And now in Genesis chapter 1, verse 7 to verse 8, the Bible says God created the firmament, the expanse, and now he called the firmament heaven. So the firmament as we see is heaven. But then we have earth, we have the firmament, then we have, what again? The waters, then we have heaven above the waters. So if you're following well, you know that You will now know that there is a heaven here above these waters, above this firmament heaven, above these waters below, and then there is earth here. So heaven, waters above, firmamental heaven, and then earth, the waters below. Everybody say, heavens of heaven. Please say it again. Heavens of heavens. They say, what is above fundamental heaven? Please, can you just encourage me with just speaking? Heavens of heavens. If you are happy to see you, what is above fundamental heavens? Then now, fundamental heavens. Then earth. Then F, 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 then waters below, below. called the seas. seas. Good. People of God, don't permit my language be fooled. Here, 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 here. There are beings everywhere. Heavens of heavens, they have their being. Waters above, they have their beings. Firmament, firmamental heaven, they have their being. Earth has its being. Waters below has its being. When you read the revelation of Jesus, he said that the devil has been cast down. He knows he has but a short time. Then prior to that, he said, rejoice. 
Therefore rejoice, you heavens. Rejoice, you heavens. And you that dwell in them. Oh, okay, that one, that one is easy because we know that the heavens, God. Okay, if nobody draws there, that's God. Then what is? He said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Oh, really? Heavens? Then he said, earth. And then the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea? Really? Inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. So that suggests that the ontology of this cosmology has beings everywhere. Structure of beings. In all spheres. If we really want to understand cosmological ontology, then we are now looking at the entire sphere, beings everywhere, existences everywhere. They are not just structures that are just there like passage structures. When you understand this, you will understand prayer. Tell somebody, God, he doesn't hear you direct. Tell another person, God, when you pray, it is not you direct that he's hearing. Somebody say, ah, how could he say that? In the book of Hosea, so that you know that I'm not talking about Old Testament. Even though it is written in the Old Testament, the prophet was speaking of the New Testament. He was speaking of the new creature. Hear what he said. He said, I, God, hear this. He said, I will hear the heavens. Listen, God, God is not in the business of trying to hear you on earth. I will hear the heavens and it shall come to pass in that day. So you must know that he's not talking about Old Testament because the prophet is talking about in that day. And it shall come to pass in that day. Question is, what is that day? Let me just go forward so that I'll come back to this. So that everybody now begins to understand when you hit the floor and you're praying, you must understand your access within the pathway of prayer. It shall come to pass in that day. There is a particular day in that day. He said, I will hear, say yet the Lord, I will hear the heavens. He didn't say he will hear you. So, God says, he will hear heavens. Then what the next one? And they, I will. It's like Mepoli. <laughs> it's like Yawa. <laughs> and they, people. And they. So listen, when you are praying, you have to make sure you have audience with them. And they shall hear the earth. Okay. So God says he will hear heavens. And they. This thing is where I want to take it to. I'm only wondering about you, your faith. It is your faith. Because it shall come to pass in that day. For you to, to know which day we are talking about, go to 23, so that I'll come back to 21. So that you understand the new creation, how you have to pray. Please, read. <laughs> The last line, Pastor, Pastor Daniel, after the semicolon, and I will say to them, and I'll say to them, uh -huh. 
which were not my people. Hold on. I will say to them in that day, which were not my people. Yeah, yeah, be brave. And I am so sorry, Basa, because you didn't treat it. There are many things that we have neglected and thought of them to be in the purview of spiritual churches because we lack teaching concerning them. A dear boy, empire, boy, boy, what? This all the summa. Who? Who to me? Who? There are certain prayers that are not ministered directly. You need an ambassador to convey those prayers. A dear boy, what? Who? Who to me? Who? Jine radi? Ni mune nenka. This all the summa. There are certain matters for which you cannot directly appear before God in his courts to speak of. You must get an envoy to submit it before him. The matter is, with time, the key thing is to decode which season you must engage in such an activity. And, we'll see. and this is the reason why he says, Some in those days, I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. This is the day when the people who were not his people will say, Thou art my God. So you know you are speaking to God, but you must understand the process by which your message will get to God. I wish I deal with times the ontology of systems, the structures, all that lies in the traffic. So you know that time, this is that, and this time, we have everything just messed up for us. And please, this is New Testament. This is New Day. This is no Old Testament. There are certain matters, if you pray individually on them alone, they will not be resolved. If you attempt to appear before God's throne by yourself, the first question you should pose to yourself is, where exactly is the throne of God's sight? Because the throne of grace is a difference. There is a distinction between the throne of grace any baby or no or tea or tea was it and the actual residency of God from whence he hears your pleas you need to follow me that is how come if if I if I had just come and I just utter things like that in the heavens please for anybody who hasn't ever been to the heavens open your Bible and for anybody who likes quoting verses go into the heavens for anybody who has never been to the heavens? Open your Bible. As I'm talking, open your Bible. Look at it from the Bible. Prove it from the Bible. When I finish, by middle of next week or middle of the mist, a lot of you go like, hey, like really? If now, whatever you are seeing in the Bible, you are beginning to realize it is challenging how you've been thinking about God and your relationship and how you relate with him, go into the heavens. Go and see it for yourself. So if you have never been into the heavens, go into your Bible. When you go into your Bible, you begin to see the thing. And the thing is beginning to challenge all that you stood for. For all your Christian life, go into the heavens. Because the thing will, will it will, you go like, hey babe, why? Because we have jangled heaven and everything about heaven, you need now boom, boom. But just this fair structure, the substructure of the heavens, a lot of us, oh, heaven, there are. There may be a yamite. That's where God is. Right? Heaven, there are. Yen ye was as is on all heaven. Oh. Yen ye was as is on all heaven. You are the on all heaven. Yen ye was. God has heaven as his dwelling place. We mere mortal men have the, end, have the earth as a place of domicile.
prayer of Solomon when he dedicated the temple. He said, Hear thou from the heavens. <laughs> He's not saying where you are seated, listen to us here. <laughs> That's not what he's saying. He's not saying where you are sitting in the heaven, when we are talking to you, listen to us here. That's not what he was saying. He said, okay, let's start from 38, 39. We'll read a couple of scriptures quickly. Then I think a lot of you will be settled with what I'm trying to say from Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. But let's just read this one first. If they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whither they have carried them captives and prayed toward their land which thou gavest unto their fathers and toward the city which thou hast chosen and toward the house which I have built for thy name then hear thou from the heavens even from thy dwelling place so you have to get this God he's in his dwelling place hey here are the no, kwasem. Listen to the truth of the matter concerning the Lord. So, if someone does not present your petition before him in this world, you have labored in vain. You actually spoke into the wind. It didn't get anywhere. The heavens speak. Na irade and it's on that premise that God hears it in his throne. And so when you speak here on earth, and the heavens do not give a response to your matter. Waste of time. Wow. You have labored in vain. If these people turn to you and pray towards the land, the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. So, for you, you're like, ah, how does he say, then hear thou from the heavens? Why didn't he say, then hear them? Because that, that is an easy way. So, you, you understand, thou that hearest prayer, Prayer from where? From you direct? No. Let's go back to Uzziah. It shall come to pass in that day. Which day? It's not Old Testament. New Testament. The people who are not my people shall be called my people and they shall now say, Thou art my God. So that is the day of the New Testament. The day of the new creation. It shall come to pass in that day I will hear, say the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil. I wish I can say some things about libation. I have offended somebody right now. You are here. And you're speaking against the conduct of another. And yet the person has death or spiritual and spiritual yet, It was actually we the believers whom should have prayed in that manner. In the place of prayer. You would have had you'd have had corn in your possession. There are times in prayer. oil You need to have oil in your possession. There are moments in prayer. You must have wine in your possession. Understand that the corn, the wine, and the oil hear what you are you are saying in prayer. And in Tina, I said, I said, this is a new called the ontology of heaven. That is why I premise my teaching on the ontology of heaven, else I would anger you by what I'm going to say. You would exclaim, 
in wonderful amazement at the things I'm coming to teach. <laughs> you are giving only to the mode of prayer that is speaking in tongues. My question to you is, where is the corn? Where is the wine? And where is the oil by which you are making your invocations in prayer? From this day on, do not be lacking in these things when you enter into the place of prayer. When you enter into the place of prayer, you must have your oil in your hand. It is not the oil that you are speaking to. The oil is not God. However, the oil has ears to hear you. And the oil would forward your petition to the earth. And at that point, the earth will mail your matter to the heavens. <laughs> and God would give ear to what the heavens are saying concerning you. That is the reason why we are of the notion that our prayers take long in getting answers, but those on the other side get hasty and quick responses to their petitions. It is because you've gone astray of death of spiritual understanding. Make sure pray with all manner of prayers. I am showing you what the scripture said when it said, pray with all manner of prayers. There are certain prayers. Whilst you are engaging in those prayers, you must have oil in your hand. In, as you are engaging in those prayers, you must have condo in your hand. You must have red wine in your hand as you are making those prayers. You must have water in your hands as you are making those prayers. The moment you are done praying, you declare Yahweh. As you are praying, yeah. 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 Yahweh. Yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. You lack understanding. Understand that the response weird is actually not weird. It is Yahweh that has been abridged. Go and ask the ancients and they will show you the ancient parts. I know your, uh, your ears are tingling. This word has been written. How will you pronounce it in Chi? Obviously. And then we cry. I have not taken you to the deaths today. I am still at the foundation stages. I am setting the foundation and giving the prayer. I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil. And they shall hear Jezreel. Can we read that in the message Bible? On the very same day, I will answer. This is God's message. I will answer the sky. Sky will answer earth. Earth will answer grain, wine, and olive oil. And they all, and they will all answer Jezreel. The pathway of the traffic of prayer. For your faith, use oil. When you mature, you can use water, you can use grain, you can use wine, not alcoholic. Grape juice. As you pray, have the oil in your hand. Just pour a bit. Listen. The elders and the ancients were not foolish. Some westernized Christianity is not a bad thing. 
Understand that the westernization. Know that our forebears. Our forebears were engaged in prayer prior to the coming of the white man. Understand that our forebears offered prayers and engaged in prayer. And so when you meet a man of God praying with oil and pouring it upon the ground, what friend is saying? What would you call such a man of God? I said something today. If I add on, I don't want to offend anybody. I said something today. I said, whatever I am saying, open your Bible. After you have opened your Bible, enter heaven. Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. It shall come to pass in that day. It shall come to pass in that day. I'm talking about the ontology of heaven. The structure. I've not gone into the place where Christ is seated. When I begin to show you what is under the sea, how it operates. The sea that you see there like that, how it operates, what is carrying the sea, and we finish and we enter the heavens. For you to understand all of these things, then you know that the reality of everything is Christ. But I don't have the time tonight. Meet me on Sunday as I drive you deeper in the ontology of heaven. a blessing.